The Gemara Maseches Bechoros poses the following question. The Gemara wants to know why honey is considered to be kosher. After all, we have a mitzvah lo sase, which is actually also one of the Sheva mitzvahs b'nei Noach. That is, that we are not allowed to eat aver minachai. We're not allowed to eat any part of an animal while the animal is still alive. And that includes what would appear to be any secretion from the animal as well. Which, of course, brings us to the question of why would it be that milk is considered to be kosher and permissible? Honey, like milk, seems to come out of a bee as milk comes out of a cow or a sheep. So the Gemara responds and says, let's deal with the issue of milk first. And the Gemara concludes that if not for the Pasuk, explicitly stating that the land of Israel is a land that's blessed, that's flowing with milk and honey, it's an Eretz Zavas Chalav Udvash, if not for that Pasuk, milk would not be kosher. We wouldn't be able to drink milk. Imagine our lives without milk, without cheese. <laughs> Everything would be so different. In that pasuk, the honey that's described is not honey that comes from bees. In that pasuk, the honey that's described is the honey that comes from dates. So how is it then that we're permitted to have honey that comes from bees? So the Gemara explains as follows. In Parshas Balak, we're introduced to Bilam who is hired by Balak to curse the Jewish people. The end result was that instead of cursing the Jewish people, Bilaam actually blessed the Jewish people. So are we to view Bilaam as a villain, or a decent prophet who ended up blessing our people instead of cursing our people? So the Sha'iris Menachem explains very beautifully. He says that Bilaam can be compared to honeybees. Honeybees transform the nectar of flowers into honey through the process of regurgitation and evaporation, which means that the honey doesn't come from the body of the bee itself. It's only created through an external force. And Chazal explained to us that the same was true of Bilam and the blessings, the brachos, that Bilam bestowed upon the Jewish people. The brachos that he gave to Bnei Yisrael didn't come from him. They were placed in his mouth by Hashem and delivered through him. So Bilam was only a conduit for Hashem's bracha, but it wasn't as if Bilam himself desired or wished to bless the Jewish people. Bilam himself was an evil, evil person who had contempt and hatred for our people at the very core of his being. Nevertheless, we do see an example in history where Hashem may have used many different types of agents, including evil ones, to accomplish something positive on behalf of B'nai Yisrael. And so honey is considered to be kosher because the bees are making the honey via their own bodies, but they themselves are not excreting the honey. May Hashem reverse the words of those who wish to curse us as a people today, God forbid as individuals, and may He turn those curses into blessings, into bracha, as He did to Bilam in our parsha. Thank you for listening, and have a good Shabbos.